Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a stove. It is the Soto Wind Master together with the four flex pot supports. And I've been wanting to review this one already for years. So watch this video and I'll tell you why I'm so late with this review. Enjoy. And welcome back to the review on the Soto Windmaster stove together with the four flex pot supports. And I will tell you more about the four flex pot supports later on in this video. But first, for those of you who just tuned into my channel for the very first time, it might be polite to introduce myself. My name is Gijs. I am a outdoor gear reviewer and I live in the Netherlands. And sometimes I also review bikes and gadgets like for example a DJI drone or the Pocket 2 that I shoot a lot of my videos with. Um, all the links below in the description if you want to see more of those reviews. Um, big thing for me is that I do my work totally independent so that means that manufacturers are not paying me for my reviews. If you like what I do at the end of this video then please give the video a like and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Many thanks in advance if you do. Now, let's get back to the Soto Windmaster stove. Like I said, I have been waiting pretty long on this stove to review. And there's a reason for this, because um, Soto, the brand itself, um, it originated from a other company. And that was the company that was founded in 1978, the Shinfuji Burner of Japan company. And what those guys did in the beginning was making really nice, you know, these pointy flame torch-like thingies. Uh, they did this for agricultural reasons, for industrial uh, purposes. And somewhere in 2010, or just a bit before that, they thought, well, let's make this technique into something which is more for outdoor use and consumers. So in 2010, Soto Outdoors was founded and Soto Outdoors is still a part of this Shin Fuji Burner of Japan company. Now, since 2010, when the first burners or stoves of Soto came onto the market, I saw them on trade shows and I have been talking to them for quite a while to get them in a review in the magazine that I used to work for in those days. And it never happened. There was a reason for this, because the burners or the stoves, they were not certified for Europe, so there was no point in testing them in those days. Then I forgot about it, and uh, last year, somewhere in uh, just before summertime, I was contacted by Mike, and he runs an outdoor gear website in the Netherlands. He sells stuff, and um, Backpacking Light, that's the name of the website, by the way, .nl, of course, because he is Dutch. And he contacted me and he said, Gijs, do you want to review a burner or a stove from Soto? And I was like, hey, yes, please do. So that's when he sent me two stoves. And the Windmaster is the first one that I'm going to review. The other one will be a little bit later. Now, let's return to the stove itself. Of course, what I always do, I start with measuring. Um, the weight and of course the pack size. And I measured the pack size, the minimum pack size. And now I will have to show you something because if I take the burner head off, then you will see that basically, and I'll take the cartridge off as well. Like so, this is the minimum pack size, of course, together with the um, pot supports. This one measures 88 by 47 millimeters. Now, if you put this one on it, then it gets a little bit wider, of course, and then it is 95 by 84 millimeters. The weight, um, I measure this part at 60.6 grams and the four flex pot supports at 26.3 grams. So if you add them up, then you come to a number of 86.9 grams in total for basically the whole complete stove. Now, uh, the stove comes with two other parts, and that is, of course, the pouch 
and I measure that one on my precise scale as well and it weighs 11.3 grams and inside there is of course a lot of paper and this is the manual and that weights almost double as the pouch itself with 21.4 grams. Now those two are not really important for the moment so let me put them aside. Um, what you see here and now I'll skip the stove for one little moment uh, because it is a gas stove and Soto was kind enough to send me um, this cartridge or I must say backpackinglight.nl Mike was so kind to send me two of these and I went testing with these and then I read the manual and also the packaging of the stove itself and the packaging is very clear you should only use this stove with a mix of 70% butane and 30% propane. And they state very, very clearly, don't use any other gas. And then I thought, okay, well, this gas cartridge, it is not for sale in the Netherlands. So what's the point? I need to use other gas cartridges. So I contacted Mike, he contacted Soto, and Soto gave me a very nice email in which they state, when all combustible stoves are examined by a CE certifying body, the EN standard requires us manufacturers to list a specific mixture of gases in our manuals. This is a requirement by law, but this does not exclude the use of any gas canisters with any mixtures available in the markets. Our manual states to use 70-30% butane and propane mixture, but it does not matter. We are required to list this combination by law. Therefore, our stoves work with any of MSR, Primus, Optimus, Jetboil, Snow Peak, etc. canisters. So with this remark, I was very confident to test the Soto Windmaster and also the other one, of course, with the cartridges that I have available in the Netherlands and that are widely available in Europe. And I have used the Primus one, I've used the Optimus one. These are basically the regular uh, cans. Um, I've also tested the stove with the Primus Winter Gas, which is a little bit of a different uh, mix. And also, of course, with these little cartridges, which is very compact and there's also very handy to bring with you on a trip. Now, with the real small canister, those packable ones, it is advisable that you put a basically a gas canister support underneath it just to make it a little bit more stable because the stove itself it is quite high if you use bigger pots. Um, what you also should know is that Soto sent me this really nice pot and this is a one liter pot um, and they wanted me to test it together with this pot. Now I did not use the pot from Soto because if you follow me already for a while, then you know that I always measure the boiling times and the gas consumption with two of the same pots that I use for every test. So I used, and you should excuse me for this very, very funny looking lid. If you want to know why this is melted and burnt, then watch the review that I did about a couple of months ago on the Optimus Gemini and after my review um, that burner was taken off the market uh, but I always test them nice pot grip I have a review on that one as well link of course below in the description um, I test them with these and this is just the regular pot it is uh, a Primus pot anodized one and this is the other one and this one it's quite a special one because this one has got a heat exchanger on the bottom which means that it will um, basically be way more efficient with the heat that you put into the pot itself but more on this later so I have been testing it with that pot and together with all the different gas cartridges now, let me get back to the Soto Windmaster itself. Like I mentioned before, um, it basically comes originally in two parts. And it's the burner, the burner head with, of course, the um, regulator on it. And it comes with the four flex pot support. And the four flex pot support, um, yeah, well, as you can see, it flexes. And when you put it on like this, it slides on pretty easy. And you see it fits really nice on the burner head itself. Maybe a little bit of a negative point on, of course, a separate 
hotspot support that is not connected to the burner head itself is the fact that you might be able to lose it. So in practice, what I always do, I just keep it on and I take the little bit bigger pack size as for granted because it's not a problem for me. What is very special about this burner head is the fact that the pot supports, what I like to do, and let me put a gas canister underneath this, just to be a little bit more clear on this. That is that, as you see it now, the pot supports, they all are basically folded down together, which means it gives a quite small surface to put your pot on. And I like to use it, and maybe you've seen the videos that I did in Sweden last year, with this very small Bialetti. Um, it fits really nice on this pot support like this. Now, of course, if you use bigger pots and pans like these, then you just fold them open. And then you've got a way bigger surface to support your pot. What I do like about the pot supports themselves is not that they are foldable, but that there are really nice ridges on top of it, which means that they, they give a lot of grip to the bottom of the pen. And what you also see is that if you fold it together, on the top there is not any ridge at all. So if you use it in the, let's say, the smaller cooking area, um, then this is sort of slippery. And I know some other stove manufacturers that do the same trick, but they have got ridges on those top of the basically foldable pot supports as well. So this is a little bit of a sort of thing that you need to take care of if you put something on there. It might be a little bit slippery. Now, if we look at the burner head itself, and this is what is really good about the um, Soto Windmaster, is the fact that the burner head itself, let's say the holes where the flames or the gas flows through, it is concave. And then you see this nice little ridge around it. And because when you put a pot on it, it is really close to the flames. And because of this being concave, it is a stove that is really well protected by wind or for the wind. And the stupid thing is that when I started testing uh, last year already in Sweden and we had quite some wind, I did not even notice it because it was not an issue that effective it is. It was later when I was writing the review itself that I thought, how did they actually do this? And it is because the burner head, it is concave. Really, really clever. Now, the other thing what I really do love about the uh, Soto Wind Mask is the fact that, of course, the regulator, it is like on more of these kind of burners. Um, it is a sort of a steel wire. It folds down, so it is in that way packable. Um, it is big. It's bigger than quite some others. That means that it is very well usable with cold hands and also when you are wearing gloves. So I think that's a pro. Then on this side you see the little red button and this is the piezo igniter. And the piezo igniter, um, when you press it, a little bit of electricity is generated. It runs with a small wire to the top of the burner head and here you will see a spark. It's like a little spark plug. And when you press it and you open of course the valve to get the gas flowing, then it will ignite the gas. And this is a absolute super user friendly system. And of course in my shed it's more dark than outdoors in the sun so I can show you how nice this flame actually is. And for those of you who are interested power that the Windmaster gives is 3260 watts or 11,000 BTUs. What I forgot to tell you by now is that if you lose the 4Flex one, um, yes, Soto does sell spare parts. There is also a um, pot support. It's a different type because it only has three legs. It weights a little bit less. You can buy that one as an accessory. But what I also do like is that, and it never happened to me, but if you break the piezo, yes, they sell this part also. And in this way, Soto, this Windmaster, is also sustainable because this will make the burner last basically longer. It's not only the gas regulator size and wire that I like, but I love the operation of the gas regulator because Soto 
and they call this a micro regulator. It is on the interior designed in a different way than most regulators. And that means that with this regulator, it is really possible to simmer your food very, very slowly. Now, let me explain this or let me demonstrate this. Um, you turn it uh, counterclockwise and from closed to full opening, it is a turn of 810 degrees or two and a quarter of turns. And now listen, and I'll put it to the microphone. Half, one, and then you hear that between half or between one and one half further, the gas starts flowing. And you can hear how well this is regulated. Oh, well, let's open it fully. Now all the gas is coming out and I need to close it because otherwise I will be funny in my head. In practice, this really means that when you open it and you put on the piezo ignition, it always ignites very, very nicely. In the year that I've been using this stove, um, the piezo never failed me once. So that is absolutely good. Cooking with this one, and most of the time we cook water because we have got these instant meals, the dry meals, uh, you only need to pour water on top of this. But if you have something like uh, pasta that you need to simmer a little bit longer or you want to cook something really nice and you need to simmer this as well, it is absolutely possible with this stove. Now, um, gas regulation, top notch. The other thing that I forget to mention now is that the gas regulator itself, it is also designed in a way that the gas in the canister is being fed through the stove on a very constant way. You've got these stoves that when you're nearing halfway or three quarters of the uh, gas cartridge is empty, that the burner basically starts performing less and less and less and less, but pretty soon. Um, with this stove, this lasts really to the last bit of gas that there is in this gas canister. And that's something that is also very, very efficient. Talking about efficiency, um, I did not tell you about the key features, of course, of any stove, and that is the boiling time. And of course, the gas consumption that it takes to boil something. Now, what I always do, like I said, I test this in my shed without wind in sort of controlled circumstances. And because it was, well, when I got it, it was really nice weather. So I tested it at 20 degrees outside temperature and a water temperature of 17.1 degrees. And I measured with the regular pot. So that is the one without the heat exchanger, a boiling time for one liters of water of three minutes and 45 seconds. And that is a little bit faster than what Soto promises because they claim a boiling time of four minutes and two seconds. Now I must state that Soto tests almost under the same circumstance because they have got a room temperature at 20 degrees as well, but they test with 20 degrees of water temperature and I did 17.1. So that is a little bit different, but my, is, my measurements are a little bit more in favor of the stove itself. And now the interesting part, because I use the pots with a heat exchanger already for, I don't know, ever since they have been invented by Primus, I think they were the first ones. Um, and it is a really ef efficient way of getting a lot of energy in a short time into your water. And I measured at full blast with the Soto Windmaster a boiling time of two minutes and 36 seconds. And that is one of the fastest boiling times I have ever measured with a stove. So yes, Soto makes a really nice pot, but they should make this one with a heat exchanger to be absolutely super fuel efficient. Um, because fuel efficient, the wind master together with the heat exchanger is absolutely, because it only takes nine 0.83 grams of gas to cook one liter of water. Now, if we take the other pan, this one with the normal bottom, um, it takes 12.7 grams. And yes, I've done this test multiple times. Um, and this is of course a 
average number that I give you. And now there is one other very interesting part, and that is the Primus Winter Gas. It's a little bit of a different mixture, but I was able to test it with zero degrees outside, or outside in my shed it was zero degrees, the gas was zero degrees, and the water was also at zero degrees. And these two together, uh, when I boiled one, water, one liter of water with the pot with the heat exchanger, it took the stove four minutes and one second. So that is one second faster than Soto claims for the water and outside temperature of 20 degrees. So that means that this stove is, well, can I say this? Bloody efficient. Yes, it took a little bit more gas because of the um, low temperatures, of course, and I measured an average gas consumption at 15.9 grams. But overall, yes, this is one of the fastest stoves that I have tested together with the pelts with the heat exchanger. It, it is also one of the most energy friendly ones. So all in all, I am pretty enthusiastic about the Soto Windmaster with the four flex pot supports. So now it's time to head on to my verdict. How do I rate the Soto Windmaster with the four flex pot supports? Well, in the first place, I really do like the pack size and the weight. No, it is not the smallest stove. It is not the lightest stove, but it is one of the best design stoves that I have ever tested. What I do like is the fact that the pot supports, in case you lose them or you damage them, you can exchange them for new ones because Soto sells spare parts. Same for the piezo and that if you want the three leg pot support, well, that one is available as an accessory too. Now, the piezo itself, it really works like a dream. One thing that really surprised me about the Windmaster is the concave burner head, because at first you don't notice it, and then when you see how wind protective it actually it is, it is absolutely a super design. Super design is also the user friendliness, of course, of the piezo igniter, and what I do love is the way how the gas regulator works. Not only it works to the last moment of the little bit of gas that's left in the gas cartridge, but it is also very usable to simmer something on a very nice slow cooking basis. But the best feature, of course, is that if you are on a longer trip, that the stove in total, it is very economical in gas, in gas consumption, and it is also very, very fast in boiling one liter of water. Now, one little point of criticism, um, that is that on the top part of the pot supports, I think it would be better if they made little ridges in here. And yeah, well, the fact that if you'd separate the four flex from the stove and you don't put it away safely, that well, you are prone maybe to lose it, but basically that's your own fault. I can't blame Soto for this. All in all, I really do like the Soto Windmaster with the four flex pot supports, and therefore I rate it at 8.8 .8 points out of 10 total. And those of you who watch videos of me in the past, then you know that I mostly mention the price before I give the rating. But with this stove, I like it so much that I don't really care about the price. But for you, in Europe, it retails for 84 euros and 95 cents. In the US, for 64 dollars and 95 dollar cents. And in pounds, it retails for 55 pounds and 95 pence. And that's all that I wanted to share with you on the Soto Windmaster stove. And um, I hope you like this video and that it is useful to you. And if it is, then please give it a like and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Because with more subscribers, well, basically you make me more happy. Because it's what I love doing, making videos uh, that people like to watch. Um, so if you've got any suggestions on stuff that you would like me to review, please put it in the comment section below. And I'm more than happy to investigate if this is going to be reality in the future. If you want to see more of my videos, well, there is much more to see on my YouTube channel because I did videos on my Lundhag pens. Of course, on my Garmin watch. 
I did a review on the Laken Thermos bottle. I did a review on this nice VSSL coffee grinder, which is a luxury if you have got some space in your backpack, but I really love making coffee in this way. And I also got a review, of course, on the pots and the pens that I've been using here. Um, just look at Primus on my website or on my YouTube channel. Many thanks for watching. And if you watch any more videos of me, thank you for watching them as well. Enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao. And like every video, this is the last piece of video. And by now this foot is totally sleeping. So yes, it hurts again. What can I do? One taker, the sun is shining, I'm hot. Bye bye.